Next electrical exhibit for analysis is an old Wilex consumer unit. I'm bringing it in like that because uh, I want you to be aware that there's nothing connected to this. Uh, in a previous video, uh, people thought I was guddling my fingers inside a live consumer unit. And that's the reason it also looked extremely neat because it wasn't wired in yet. This is an old consumer unit. Um, you can see that from this lovely patina, this lovely effect of the rust mottled in the hammerite type finish. I've got friends in the prop industry who would spend so much time trying to get this pattern. They'd spent all day handcrafting that pattern just to make things look the part. However, I digress, as is so often the case. So this thing would normally have a little thumb screw in the end here, but someone's got very excited and that thumb screw has come off. So let's uh, let's remove this little thing. It doesn't really matter. The lid just slips on. This is a bit of an issue because these things, and it seems appropriate that I should be making this on actually on the Easter weekend. I'm actually making this video. It seems appropriate that uh, it contains an Easter egg for the Easter weekend that I did not know about. It's a feature that I didn't know about that is based on the fact that there are little ports here, which uh, flames come out of when fuses blow forcefully, depending on the perspective fault current. And if this cover with the lip is in place, then that's not much of an issue. You may find a slight skid mark. Like this one, you, there's a skid mark. So you may find slight skid marks inside these covers. But if this cover was not there, that can actually flash out and make uh, electrical contact. The plasma can make contact with the metal case and then cause an arc flash that passes enough current to blow the electricity supply company's fuse, the local fuse for your house, completely. And uh, I'm guessing now, I've never actually seen this situation because I'm guessing that mostly when I've been in installations that these uh, have been used, and I have to say I've installed quite a few of these in the past, um... I've never really looked for a, a flash onto the metal, and now, now I'm saying that, I think I have come across sooty skid marks and the usual metal burn marks that you usually get, that slight melted effect. So uh, that's something worth noting. If you have one of these still in your house, and there's no reason you shouldn't, because they are still a valid device, then uh, make sure the lid is always left in position. And if you're going to change a fuse and you think it's going to blow, it's worth turning the main switch off, well it's always worth turning the main switch off when you're changing fuses in these because of the configuration. Uh, but make sure the lid's back on before you turn the power back on again. It's probably a good idea, it could save uh, big bangs, basically. Not that there's anything wrong with big bangs. So this one is marked inside with a biro. That's great, biro on matte plastic. And it's marked, uh, fuse one was a cooker, immersion heater, that's the 15 amp one, Ring main one, ring main two, ring main three, so many ring mains. Lights, lights, lights. Uh, just reference, uh, they, you know, a lot of people say it's never ever been called a ring main. A lot of people refer to these ring circuits as ring mains. They are supposedly called ring final circuits this year. Goodness knows what they'll be called next year. It seems to change every so often. It's also noticed this slightly shattered plastic case has a uh, ability to actually uh, knock the front of it out. And the reason for that, I guess, is mainly to allow the use of much deeper uh, circuit breakers. You've got, these are individual fuse holders, uh, two types. There's a cartridge fuse holder and a rewirable one, but you could also get circuit breakers that plugged into these as well, and it was just an easy way to convert an old distribution board to something a bit more modern. Let's open it. So I shall put some bits out the way here. And I'll use my nice electrical compliant VDE screwdriver to pop the lid off. This is a, because people will ask, it's a Wera, or Wera, Wera, uh, VDE screwdriver, but it takes uh, interchangeable bits. It just means you don't have to have a full set of screwdrivers with you. It's quite handy. It's not cheap. It is uh, aimed at professional use, so it's got the hardened tip, that's, uh, and it's going to take a, a bit more ham-fisted monkey force. So let's pop this cover off and we'll explore the interiors. Let's take the whole thing to bits, that's the best bet. So the screws are captive, that's nice. They've got little uh, lock washers to stop them being lost completely. Not that it's that uncommon to find open fuse boxes like this, it really is depending on the type of environment. Sometimes you find fused consumer units with just the lid missing because someone was too lazy to put it on. So we have the fuse, fuses 
and I'll show you an example of one. This one, which comes complete with a little uh, asbestos slug in here, has a ceramic fuse wire carrier. And it's got a little screw at each end, and you thread your fuse wire through this, wrap it around the screw, and then tighten it. And I have to say, I've never really liked these fuse holders because it never feels 100% secure, percent secure as you tighten it. There is a tiny little washer there, but it is always just that little bit sort of vague that it's kind of, as you tighten it, you have to be careful not to do it too much or it will squish the wire or, or pull it tight and snap it. Um, other people are lazier. They'll put the fuse wire through and they'll wrap it around the pins and uh, then shove the fuse back in. And some people even leave big bits of wire sticking out and then try to put the fuse back in with the bit of fuse wire sticking out and get a wallop off it. The perils of working old uh, consumer units. So the ring main ones and the cooker one are different. They have the pins going in, but you have to undo the screw. And when you undo it, the two halves come apart. And you've got a cartridge fuse, English Electric 30 Amps. ASTA certified BS1361. And there's nothing that really clamps this, other than the fact that the, it sits on very loosely over the fuse. You sit it back in, and then once it's actually uh, put together and it's pushed in, as the prongs are pushed together in between the contacts here, it just gently grips the fuse. Seems a bit sort of, seems a bit vague, but it does work. Incidentally, if you have one of these old units, uh, the, you can still get the fuse holders for them and the fuses. It's a very, very standard unit in the UK. So let's get all these out and they are a tight fit. This is a good, good thing. Oh, there's also a little label. Uh, there's the, the difference. What, what is this difference here? But is there anything really physical? No, not really. Oh, uh, worth mentioning. I, while I've researched in this, trying to look for the plastic ones, I found John Ward's site. And uh, he mentions that if you've got any of these with the paint missing, it's not just marking the uh, the current rating, it's also covering the screws that hold the block in. So if it's missing, it exposes live metal. Not that you'd ever really be going like that with your finger anyway, but it's just one of those things. Bring this back up because there's a label inside. It's a bit sort of decrepit, but let's uh, take a look at it. And it says... Rewirable type, important use correct wire, 5 amp, 35 SWG, 15 amp is 26 SWG, 20 amp, 25 SWG, and 30 amp, 22 SWG, and it is just tinned copper. The wire goes into these. And the cartridge type fuses are 5 amp, it's a white cartridge fuse, uh, 15 amp blue, 20 amp yellow, and 30 amp red. I initially thought it was some fancy wire when I was young. It's not, it's just standard copper wire of the correct diameter. The whole point of the fuse is that if something's going to give, it should be something less critical than your wiring. So the main thing is it should be considerably less than your wiring size so that it doesn't... Bear in mind that to actually blow the fuse, you're heating up to the point it physically burns, so it has to be a lot thinner than your mains wiring because if it isn't, then your mains wiring will reach similar metal melting temperatures and as they're covered in plastic, that's bad news. So let's uh, get these fuse holders off, revealing the bus bar underneath, which uh, can be touched if you put your finger underneath. But then again, if you're, if you do that, or you poke wires underneath while you're wiring inside a live consumer unit, you're kind of well tempting fate in the first place. Note that these some of these have this asbestos, but some of them don't. Thing worth mentioning about asbestos, particularly the hard asbestos. Well, all asbestos, really. If you find asbestos in a building, it's better just to leave it untouched. It's the safest thing to do. Um, the loose, fluffy asbestos, which uh, I could give you a demonstration. I could show you what loose, fluffy asbestos looks like. One moment. This is what blue asbestos looks like. It's very fluffy, and dust comes off at the slightest disturbance. This is not blue asbestos. This is tumble dryer lint out of my tumble dryer, but just... Tumble dry a pair of jeans and a blue sweatshirt, and what you'll get out is this blue fluff, and it looks very, very similar to blue asbestos. Places you might find blue asbestos in old cinemas, in between the wall, between the projection room and the auditorium, because in the old cinemas, the film was made of uh, 
uh, uh, nitrocellulose, and it was very, very combustible. And once it went up, the whole reel would literally just explode in flames. And there were a lot of fires in cinemas, so they tended to have that loose, fluffy asbestos filling it up like fiberglass before they knew that it was harmful. If you come across it, if you make a hole in a wall and you find that blue fluff-like tumble dryer lint behind it, immediately stuff it right back in and put a bit of tape over that hole. And if you, if it's your house or whatever, that's just make sure that you realise that is in there. It's best not to touch it. As soon as you start disturbing it, then it gets into the air. That's what you don't want. Um, with uh, In the case of an industry, if you're on a job, just contact, tell your supervisor immediately that you've found what you suspect may be blue asbestos and uh, call a halt proceedings at that point. In a commercial environment, they probably do want to get rid of that or they just want to seal it up. Take the cover off this. It's got a little uh, toggly on-off thing which may or may not come off. Am I just tempting fate here? It's quite old, it may break, I won't bother. Let's take a look at the switch under here. The hard white asbestos, like uh, in these, this uh, slab, the stuff that's in cement, if it is chrysotile asbestos, the white asbestos, then it, it's not actually as bad. It's one of the least ones. You don't certainly don't want to actually breathe in all the time, but if you have breathed some in the past, don't worry. Because if it is chrysotile, your body can actually deal with it itself. It does kind of get rid of that out of the body. It can actually dissolve it in the lungs and get rid of it. So what do we have here? We have the little toggle here. And we have just a bus bar that bounces up and down. It, it's actually a double pull. So uh, wherever it, it pushes down, it's kind of breaking one side, I guess. I don't know if it actually breaks both sides. Or if, I think given the way it works and the simple arrangement here, that it is just possibly pushing down and it will break probably both sides. It, particularly if it pushes right down the middle. Hard to say. But the main thing is it breaks the circuit, but as always, check before you touch anything. We've got the two uh, connections come in. We've got the live come in here, which goes through the switch and then goes onto the bus bar and feeds all of these. This uh, little tiny bit of Paxlin can come out. That's quite nice, they've included that to avoid frontal contact. And the neutral comes through here, and it goes up to the common neutral bar. There's no RCDs or GFIs in this. If you have one of these in your house, there's nothing wrong with adding an external RCD or GFI. Just one moment again. Couple of options here, a metal case unit or the traditional sort of plastic-based isolator box, but with an RCD in it. Um, I'm not sure that stands these days. The plastic, I don't see a problem with the use of the plastic in that case, uh, since it, it's probably safer putting it in, particularly if it gets done live, I wouldn't recommend that. Definitely not something for the, a home DIY project, because uh, typically to put an isolator in if there's not one already, or, or this, you know, if there was an isolator, you'd want to put this in between that isolator and your consumer unit. But uh, if there's not one already, that's definitely an electricity board pulling the fuse job. It's definitely, you don't want to be feeding uh, live incoming supply cables into metal cases unless you're very bold, which uh, some of you are. Right, I'm going to get these out of the way. Uh, that, incidentally, is just an isolator, this one, the red. This one is an RCD. It's a Type S. 80 amp, 100 milliamp, the type S indicates that it's going to discriminate and allow, if you had this and then you had a, a distribution board with R, the th sort of 30 milliamp R instant trip RCDs in it, then if you get a fault current of say about 50 milliamps, one of them will trip before this one because this is 100 milliamps, but also if you had a dead short live to earth, th the fastest RCD is going to trip. This one's got a very slight time delay in it. So it's 100 milliamp. I think it's 100 milliseconds. It's got enough of a time delay that, that will allow other RCDs to trip before this one. It's just to avoid accidentally tripping out power to your whole installation. I shall put these down the floor and bring the unit back up again. Let us continue our exploration here with a bigger screwdriver tip. Let's say uh, I just grab a random screwdriver that comes to hand here. And I'll whip these out. I've only come across blue asbestos once in my life. I've come across the hard white asbestos on numerous occasions. It's unfortunate that uh, at the point we discovered the blue asbestos, we suddenly realised that the air we'd been working in, uh, which was 
ancient, had probably been contaminated the dust from it, but then what can you do? It's just one of these things we didn't know at the time that they were going to find that. So this is modular, I notice. We've got one, two, three modules. Actually, it's four identical modules. That's very interesting that we have done that. And uh, this appears to be a separate unit as well. That's interesting. One of these screws is not fully out yet. Uh, talking to some old time electricians uh, I worked alongside, uh, one of them said with a slight sort of his voice cracked as he said it, he'd worked in the shipyards where they used a lot of asbestos and they actually, it was the loose fluffy stuff they used to mix in the plaster and put around the pipes. Uh, he and his co-workers used to have snowball fights with it and you think, oh, there was major uh, asbestosis. In, uh, involved in the ship building industry when they did finally discovered when all the sy symptoms started throwing up, throwing up, showing up. And there was a company uh, in Glasgow, a legal company, that specialised in stalling the asbestosis cases uh, against the shipbuilding companies for just long enough that the victims of asbestosis died and then the case was dead. That's the entire legal industry, that company, that was their entire business, was stalling cases and people until people died. And I often thought what would have been really nice in that particular legal office is to go in and thoroughly dust the air with asbestos and then make sure they can't get out the door and uh, just see how they like it. Yeah, I just think that's pretty disgusting. But then again, I think many aspects of the legal industry are pretty disgusting. Anyway, I digress again. Here's the bus bar, which is kind of modular. That's strange. Oh, it's kind of cut out where it actually goes underneath the screws that the uh, these contacts are screwed in. I suppose that compromises in the sort of uh, the available sort of the thickness of the bus bar, but it is a very thick, it's about three millimetres, just over eighths of an inch maybe. Uh, thick, and these are really solid contacts. I mean, you saw when I was putting the fuse in, you could see that the it really takes a lot of force to get it to go in there. It really pushes that back. There's no skimping materials. Uh, that's notable because Wilex isn't such a common brand these days. Uh, having been one of the biggest electrical supplier, uh, distribution board suppliers, they unfortunately took a bit of a hit in adverse publicity when uh, some batches of circuit breakers they had made suffered contact burning problems and uh, started going on fire. Uh, it just caused a huge recall that caused them huge difficulties, as these things do. Uh, I'm just looking at that screw there. I want to take that one out. It does just really uh, these blocks, everything just kind of like interlocks together. It's very modular, isn't it? And there's that cutout that I was talking about that does kind of compromise in the, the actual area of the bus bar. But having said that, it's not a huge issue. In this instance, they'd usually have the high current uh, fuses up next to the isolator. So there's the minimum sort of resistance there. And then the lowest current ones, as in this case, at the left anyway. Interesting stuff. It does appear to have plated contacts. They appear to have coated that with something. And likewise, the switch contacts actually have little indentations. It's got the little contact uh, plates on here. So that's, uh, is there anything else to say about this? Is there anything else I can say about it? We've got the earth uh, bus bar connection on the side. That also has, oh, that also has, um, studs on the bottom of that are you are designed to take earth earthing as well but to be honest i wouldn't rely on that as the main earth i'd always bring you know it's useful to earth the case like that but i'd always bring a earth cable in and take it directly into this although having said that look it's an eight-way unit and it's only got eight earth connections I'd just end up stuffing two in one but i definitely want to use one of these they've got multiple size of holes out for the main earth yeah, that's quite interesting. It's quite nicely made. It's very traditional and Britishy. Wilex patents non-track. I guess it was designed to resist tracking just by having sort of barriers between them. Interesting stuff. So yeah, the Wilex metal consumer unit, that's what it looks inside. I should say that if you've got one of these in your house, 
then there's nothing inherently wrong with these. They're they're old, but they're very very robust. It's not. It doesn't mean change immediately. It's not like it's not like it's a vintage thing. It does and give an indication of the state the wiring in your house might be sort of it might be sort of the older style wiring. But again, as long as it's uh, fairly electrically intact, as long as it's not showing serious signs of uh, damage, then it should be okay. Um, other things worthy of note, if you move into a house that has one of these, if you have one of these in your house, it's worth turning the isolator off, taking the fuses out and making sure the correct wire is inside because there's this trait that people, if they didn't have the correct fuse wire or if something was blowing all the time, particularly when they're putting, you know, plugging things into lighting circuits, then they'll upgrade the fuse wire and that's not a great thing. If it's a 5 amp fuse holder, it should be a 5 amp fuse wire in it. Um, if things have been modified since and you do actually have, say, a 2.5 millimeter cable going into it and that is the whole circuit is knowingly rated for, say, 16 amps or 15 amps in this case, then theoretically you could change the fuse holder to match that cable. But generally speaking, the main thing is to make sure that the fuse inside is matched to the cable. That's quite important there just to provide that proper protection. And that is it. I think I don't think I can say anything more about this. It is a fairly chunky unit. It's got knockouts in the side uh, for putting the rubber grommets in. It's got the big knockouts in the back, which uh, should have grommets stripped around them. But in this case, it was uh, on a piece of wood with the hole drilled sort of inside the diameter of that. So it, uh, the wood itself kept the cables away from the, the metal. Nowadays, they tend to seal that round that with a sort of a filler or, or an intumescent seal that puffs up when it gets hot to actually seal that and protect against uh, flames getting out of the unit if it does go in far. I've never really seen one of these really burn up, though. Um, but if you're working in the British electrical industry, you may well have. Let me know in the comments below.